Hello my good friends, today I'm going to explain a menu system and then share the code with you guys. First let's take a look at the script in action so you can see what it is before listening to me ramble on for 42 hours. It's the world of webcraft menu system that spawned this tutorial request from a good friend of mine named Brendan who is teaching me how to get hot chicks in return for me teaching him web development stuff. You can see this is the forum topic right here, I'll show you. He says he wants to understand how to create the world of webcraft menu system which is this one right here so you can see as I go over the menu items they fade out and fade in and they're all kinda of drop down menus that show sub menu items under the main link when you click it so it sounds like he's getting a little confused in his own experiment so we're gonna help him out with this little video and script now let's take a quick look at what the exact code that you will be getting today produces this is the page here you can see as I go over the menu items, they each fade in and out, and they give me a nice sub-menu under the menu item. And this one is programmed to not be a sub-menu item. That just goes to direct to a page. But these won't go anywhere. They won't navigate anywhere when the user clicks them. They'll just open up a menu, and actually they open and close the menu. So you can see the user can just toggle it right there. And at the end of the video, I'll show you how to put some enhancements in to where you can customize the way it acts. For instance, if you want to roll down into the page and you want that menu to go away right when you leave its boundaries, we're going to add some code for that. So I'll show you how to do that as well. That way you can tweak it out to your liking. And I'll also show you how to center those. If you want to center those or maybe push them a little more this way to the left so they're not so much on the edge of their corresponding link that opens them. See what I'm saying? And I also threw in a little bonus of showing how to blend the background of that drop menu into the background of your header. That way things look a little more blended for you if you want. And it's just simple JavaScript, CSS, and HTML. Okay, here's the script that I produced as the standalone example that you saw right here. Now the first thing you're going to need is if you want your menu to have these nice little fadey kind of in and out fade effects you're going to have to use either jQuery or you can use my script that I use right here fadeeffects.js which is just a more efficient way to fade in and out you can fade objects on your page in and out using this lightweight script here which works externally just like jQuery does so if you look inside of your jQuery file you'll see that it's much 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 bigger than this so this is just a slim, lightweight way to fade things in and out if you don't already apply jQuery to your pages. But if you already apply jQuery to your pages, it would make sense if you want to keep jQuery in play to just use your jQuery fade methods. If you're familiar with calling jQuery's fade methods, then you can just use jQuery instead of my file here. But if you'd like to do it exactly the way I'm doing it, you can just grab this fadeeffects.js file. And this right here shows you how to apply it to the script. Actually, this code in the script already shows you. And you're going to be getting all of this code here. Okay? So basically, the code from fadeeffects.js is going to be in your file here, in this document. And we can use those functions. We can call fade in and fade out anytime we need. Or, like I said, you can link to jQuery right here. You link to the jQuery file, and you can call its fade in and fade out methods. Now you're going to see in the script that there's extra things in the page that I put in place that are really not necessary to drive this menu system. But the other things are in place to show you how to lay this menu system anywhere you need it to be. So for instance, if you have a header, so I put a header in place. I also put a logo div, and my logo div is this dashed blue line that you see. That's a div that holds the company logo. Then right under it is where I have the menu system div. So to understand this script fully, you're going to have to have basic knowledge of CSS, HTML, and some JavaScript skills. Not much. I'm going to explain the JavaScript more than I'll explain everything else. But I'll start with explaining the HTML, then we'll touch on the CSS, and then I'll explain this JavaScript here. Now let's take a look inside the body element of the page. All of this content here that I have highlighted. First thing is I have a comment that says start header. Then I have another comment where the header ends, says end header. That way you can keep track of where things are in case you have a lot of menu items within your header. And then under that we just have a div that holds 
everything else on the page. So I just called it rest of page. So it has an ID of rest of page. And let's open that. You can look at the HTML. It's just an H2 heading and a paragraph element. You can have all kind of crap in there. That would be like the rest your page wrapper for the rest of the page. That div. Okay, so let's close that up. Now let's take a quick look at the HTML within the header div. You can see the first thing, we have that logo div sitting in place right here above everything else. And it opens and closes right there on that line. Then we have another comment for ourselves. It says start the menu system. And then when the menu system ends, you put a comment in that says end menu system. You can see that div that contains all the things within the menu system is called header menu system. And it has a nice long name just because I wanted to make it clearly identifiable to you. You can shorten that up after you figure things out. And within the header menu system, which is sitting under the company logo, I'll show you again. Here's the company logo div that has the blue dashed line around it. And then under that is the four items within the navigation menu. So you have your header menu system, which is that navigation menu. And here's your four items that are within it. Now the first three have IDs of container one, container two, and container three. The last one doesn't need an ID because it's not going to render a drop down. That just goes directly to, you can make that go directly to contact.php or HTML, whatever you're working with. So that's just a direct link. You can see my contact link, that would just go straight to the contact page and render no drop down like these do. Now I'll show you the inner, now I'll just show you what's going on inside of container one here. And container two and container three, its content is exactly the same, pretty much, except it has different uh, IDs. So it has an ID of drop menu one. If we open up container two, you can see that it has ID of drop menu two. But it's all pretty much the same exact code and the same HTML structure within each of those containers. So let's look what is exactly in container one. The first thing we have in container one here is that link that says services. Let's take a look. That's this blue link right here. And remember, these containers, container one, two, three, and even this one here, are all set to float. We're using CSS to do that. We're floating them left. That way they sit right next to each other because if you didn't float them left, they would sit underneath one another. They would layer down the page like a normal block element div would. But using float left, we can make them like inline elements so they'll sit together horizontally up top there. Okay, so after that blue link, you'll have a div called drop menu one. And that is actually this drop menu here and these three items within it. So you can see my three little link items within it. It's just three simple links. And we give each one of these little drop menus that you see here an ID. That way we can correctly communicate to these drop menus through the JavaScript. And we can also style them up using CSS and we can just use a class to style them all the same. Or you can style them independently with the CSS as well because they also have unique IDs. So we're putting that to use in our CSS. So the way the drop menu comes into play is that this services link has an on mouse down event, which is like similar to on click. But I just made the on click event be equal to return false. That way it does nothing. And we're giving it a pound sign as the href. That way it doesn't navigate anywhere. We give it the on click so it doesn't show the little pound sign in their address bar when they click this link. What would happen is a little pound sign will show up in their address bar when they click that link if you don't put on click return false. Then all you have to do is on mouse down, you run the drop menu function for this drop menu one right here. And this is a JavaScript function that is up in the JavaScript code here in the head of the document. And I'm going to explain that drop menu function and that's really the magic behind everything is that drop menu function. Okay, so you see the inner workings of each div ID container one, two, and three. Like I said, they all have the same structure within them, but they just have different IDs for their corresponding place in the menu. And that's all of the HTML in the document. Now I'm going to skim over the CSS very quickly, because if you don't know CSS, you really should learn some CSS before trying to adapt a menu system like this into your pages. If you want it to be if, to ha if you want it to look any different than mine, you're going to want to know some CSS, okay? That's all I'm saying. 
but I'm going to explain the CSS I have in place a little bit. Uh, this div my header that targets the div ID of my header right here that's in the HTML. So anything that's within this affects that div. These properties affect the div ID of logo, which is this dashed uh, box up top inside of the header. You can see there's its dashed border right there and its height. Its height is really what determines where this menu is going to be placed vertically on the page. So you can see our four menu items are just really stacked right underneath that logo div. Now the next thing is the header menu system div and that's the div that contains these four items all together. So that's the parent element for those four links. And you can see it's just set to margin left 16 so it's not so much next to the end of the page here on the left. Then you target the header menu system div that contains all four of the menu items. Target div within, that means you're targeting the child divs within that main div. And each one is set to float left and have a margin of 20 pixels on the right and left and zero pixels on the top and bottom. So that's how we're getting a little bit of spacing here. You can see there's 40 pixels between each one of these because they have a margin left and right of 20 pixels each. Now the next thing is the drop menus. This is the styling for the drop menus. Drop menus are these actual little guys that pop out here on the page. The little magic menus. So you can clearly see all of the display settings and all the different various CSS properties that I have at play within that. So if you don't understand these properties fully as you skim through them here and look at them then you would want to research them in depth at that point. And then that's how you learn everything. Now these have a top position of 100. That affects exactly where it is on the page in its vertical position, all three of these little menus. And I'll show you what I mean. Let's just change that to 120. And you'll see what it does. Let's go back to the page, refresh it, and then hit one of those items. You see it pushed it down 20 pixels. So you just leave that at, at the exact pixel placement that you want it. And then you get a seamless look. Now I'm not even going to bother explaining the rest of those. You can go ahead and research them if you fail to understand what they do. Now, the drop menus, child A tags, so that means all of the little links within each one of these drop menus. You see the three links in this menu? There's three links in this menu, and there's three links in this menu. Each one of those links are A tags. Those little buttons are A elements link HTML elements. And you can see they're set to block. That way they take up a whole display block within the little div. And it's not just a little word that has only the clickable length of the word. You have the whole clickable length of the block. Okay, so you know what this rule applies to all of these lines. They apply to those little links. Now this just applies to the hover state of those links. You can see when I hover over those, they change white, white background, they change to a blue border instead of the black. You can also actually change the color of the links to be blue if you want when you hover over it. Let's do that. Let's go ahead and change the color of the actual words to be a bright blue like that. Now when we refresh the page, you can see now when we hover over them, they're still black, the little words in there. Let's refresh the page. Now you can see we have nice blue words when we hover over. Now I put these three rules in place, that way we can specify a left position for these menu items to get them off of the edge of the little clickable item that initiates them. You might not want them straight on to the left edge of those. You might want them pushed in a little bit this way. You can actually center them. And this is the styling for the div rest of page, which we're going to make the rest of page. We're going to show you some additions to this script to where when you hover off of this little menu item, right when my mouse leaves that little div that holds those three links will make that div go away if you want to have that kind of functionality on your page. And you can make it to where when you hover off it goes away or you can make it stay there and then when somebody clicks or tries to interact with something down in your page then you can make it go away. So there's a lot of different things you can target and you can make it behave in a lot of different ways. Okay finally we're going to take a quick look at the JavaScript that's in place and then we'll tweak the menu out to add the different functionality that I was talking about. Let's open that up and you can see it's not much at all at play. 
in the first line is we set up a little menu array and I just named it MA for short it stands for menu array and that holds the three values that correspond to the IDs of your menu items your little drop menus those three names correspond to those three drop menus if you have five drop menus you just put them all in there separated by commas now we're doing this so we have an easier way of handling the fade in and fade away when you click on certain ones you want to make sure that if this menu is open for staff when you click services then that one goes away and service is open so that's why I packed it into an array like that so we can use a for loop to take care of that logic for us in just a few lines of code and I'll explain that for loop right now so here we have the drop menu function that's the one that these links call like right when I click locations here boom that function fires off in JavaScript that one too and that one this one doesn't call that function so it won't initiate it but this one and this one and this one do and that's this function right here drop menu and you can see each drop down menu is dynamically represented by this X variable so this X argument is a variable that we can use within our little script here that will target each respective div that is being called so when this is clicked it's this little uh, drop down menu that is the target object when this one's clicked it turns into this being the target object so that's what the X represents so when each one of those main menu links are clicked to open up a drop menu the first thing we do is run this for loop here which will uh, run over this menu array it will iterate through each of the items within it so you drop menu 1 2 and 3 alright so here's the logic of the for loop for var menus in menu array and you can see we have three menus in our menu array so that establishes that this loop is going to run three times then to access each one of these menus as they run through the loop all you have to do is this code right here so you target the menu array and then the respective menu inside of it that's passing through the loop you put that within your square brackets so that holds the value of whichever one of these menus is passing through that loop this code right here so you can evaluate it and say if that value is not equal to X then you're going to hide it you want to make it display none and you can also run the fade out so what that means is when I click one of these links I don't want the menu item that I'm clicking for to not show I just want the other ones to disappear so if any other ones are open they disappear when I click on the one that I want so that's how you get that functionality is you just say if the menu item passing through the loop is not equal to the target menu item that the person is clicking then you hide it and that's what this code right here does document I get element by ID whichever menu is passing through the loop style display equals none if it's not equal to the target menu item that the person is clicking on you want to make it display none and you can do that through this for loop for as many menu items as you want now the last little bit of logic that we have to explain is this simple if and else condition statement and that's the end of the script right there so we say if document that get element by ID and the dynamic drop menu either drop menu 1 2 or 3 style display is equal to block then we're going to fade it out else we're going to fade it in now this little if condition gives you the toggle functionality for instance let's say we first come to the page and the user opens this link here for this sub menu he can just click it again and it goes away so that's how you get that toggle functionality within each one of the individual links okay so if the little sub menu being requested if its style is already blocked and it's displaying already then you want to fade it out because the user has clicked this link again to toggle it away see that's how you get that functionality else if it's not already showing you want to fade it in so for instance services drop down is not already showing so we're going to fade it in okay so that's the best I can really explain the script okay now let's go down into the HTML and I'll show you a little something you can do to change the behavior of things we're gonna add an on mouse over event 
to this rest of the page div and that's going to be equal to a JavaScript function that we can fire off when the mouse when the user's mouse goes over that div anytime it goes over that div and what we're gonna do is we're gonna run drop menu so we already have the functionality in place so let's just utilize it one more time right there run drop menu don't pass any arguments through it now let's watch what happens you can even put a style here because my page doesn't have much content your page would be much taller much higher vertically because you would have a lot of content on your page mine just has two sentences so I'm going to give it a height 500 pixels that's fair now let's run the file let's refresh this and it gives us that functionality that I was talking about now watch when I leave this menu system with my mouse see it goes away and you can set it up to have animated effects if you want so that gives you the functionality of when your user's mouse leaves that menu system you can make it go away very easily and you can change this to on mouse down so if they happen to click anything so what I'm talking about is if you refresh you'll see if I leave the menu system now the little drop down it won't go away until I click and try to interact with something on the page you might want that kind of functionality see it stays in place until I try to interact with something else okay so I'm going to leave it just like it is here and this is the code that you will get that corresponds with this video tutorial and I'll have this uh, code under the video develop PHP just like always with the rest okay guys that about wraps it up and I don't want you guys to think that having JavaScript as opposed to CSS uh, pure CSS drop down menus is better but I'm just saying that you can apply JavaScript if you want to make uh, make magic happen through JavaScript if you want to use that instead of all CSS it's fun to explore the things that JavaScript can do because JavaScript is going to become more and more a necessary tool for you within all of your applications